Hello there. Welcome to video 138 from Sumit Academy. I do hope that you have subscribed to my channel. Do subscribe now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. And do remember to like and share this video too. And if you want to drop in a line, I shall always be available at sumitacademy20 at gmail.com. To make your task a little easier, here is a complete list of all the 138 videos available on my YouTube channel. The list is divided into the playlists under which they are available. Do have a look. If you feel that your command over the English language is not good or you want to prepare for your forthcoming exams, then this video is for you. Here we shall learn about using idioms to polish up our language. But a word before that, I do hope that you have seen my earlier three videos on idioms. Please do so they will be useful for you. This is the fourth of four videos on idioms. These four videos with 50 idioms each will encourage you to learn 200 idioms in a simple, easy to understand language along with example sentences. And of course, a dash of humor now and then. Do start remembering as many as you can and do start using them in your daily life. You will see a remarkable difference in your ability to speak the English language. So, what are idioms? An idiom is a phrase which always refers to something else rather than what each word signifies. Each idiom carries a figurative meaning, which is quite different from the literal meaning. Now in English, there are an estimated 25,000 idiomatic expressions. Idioms are one of the hardest parts of learning a language. An idiom is a phrase 
which has a meaning. But the meaning is not clear from the words themselves. If you translate an idiom word for word, it sometimes makes no sense at all. They are like puzzles and even native speakers can get confused when someone uses a phrase that they have never heard of. With that in mind, here are 50 common English idioms that you can use in a variety of situations. So let's start. Our first idiom is slippery as an eel. Now this means that someone is devious, scheming and untrustworthy and difficult or impossible to apprehend, catch or pin down. If someone is as slippery as an eel, they are difficult to catch or take hold of. The eel's long slender body with only minute scales deeply embedded in the skin looks totally smooth and is very slippery when wet. These characteristics give rise to the simile which dates from the 14th century and is, in still, is in still in use today. Let us see a couple of example sentences. The murder suspect is slippery as an eel and has so far escaped arrest. Another sentence would be, when it comes to talking about his investments, Deepak is slippery as an eel. A second idiom is to be able to do something in your sleep. This means that one is able to do something very easily because you have done it many times before. We can say that it means to be able to do something with very little or no difficulty or complete or accomplish something in a relaxed, carefree or effortless manner. Our example sentences would be He'd done the journey from Delhi to Chandigarh so many times that he felt he could do it in his sleep. Another one, you should ask Saurabh for help. He is able to do this level, this level of maths in his sleep. Another one would be, it took me a little while to get used to this job. But now I'm able to do it in my sleep. That means I'm able to do it quite easily without putting any extra effort into it. Next, we have a slip of the tongue. This means to commit a small mistake when speaking or writing. So let's use it in a sentence. The news anchor's innocent slip of the tongue has gone viral on social media. Another one, his slip of the tongue in referring to his classmate as his fiancé led to an embarrassing situation for both of them. Fourth, we have the idiom, teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Now, this means to tell or show somebody how to do something when they can already do it better than you can. It also means to try to reach, to try to teach an older person who is wiser, more experienced and worldlier than a young person may think. These days, this proverbial saying has little impact as few people have any direct experience of sucking eggs, grandmothers included. It is quite an old phrase and is included in John Stevens' translation of Kyodo's comical works of 1707. Now, let's see our example sentences. 
I have been playing tennis for 30 years. Go teach your grandmother to suck eggs. That means I know how to play tennis. Don't teach me the nuances, the art of playing tennis. Or teaching Rahul to use the computer is like teaching your grandmother to suck eggs. That means Rahul is an expert on the computer. Don't try and tell him what to do and what not to do. Then we come to in your own good time. This means to do something when you want to and not when other people tell you to. Let's have a look at our example sentences. There is no use in getting impatient. She will complete the task in her own good time. Another one. He will make a decision in his own good time. That means you can't hurry him up into making a decision. Our sixth idiom is that's the way the cookie crumbles. This means that is the situation and since we cannot change it, we have to accept it. And a look at our example sentences brings us to, I am sorry you didn't get the job, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. I know the punishment is unfair, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. That means whether you like it or not, that's the way things are. Our seventh idiom is to put on airs. This means to behave in a way which shows that you feel that you are important to act proudly or arrogantly. Now, what do our example sentences say? You should stop giving yourself airs. I know that you have been elected to the Residents Association, but you are still just one of us. And in spite of being so rich, she does not put on any S. That means even though she is very rich, has a lot of money, she is not proud of it. She doesn't flaunt it. She doesn't show off. We now come to alive and kicking. This means still existing and strong or active. A look at our example sentences now. Classical music may not be very popular with the masses anymore, but it is certainly alive and kicking in some parts of the world. And another one. A fresh round of funds from the investors kept the company's business alive and kicking. Our next idiom is to keep up appearances. This means to hide the true situation and pretend that everything is going well. To act as though everything is normal or fine in times of trouble. To make things look alright whether they are or not. Example sentences for you. They were very unhappily married but kept up appearances for the sake of their children. Another one, Asha tried very hard to keep up appearances as she fell further and further into credit card debt. Our tenth idiom is to keep at arm's length. This means to avoid becoming too friendly with somebody. For example, I believe that he is the kind of man best kept at arm's length. Or, I like to keep my office colleagues at arm's length after working hours. Next, we have the idiom, an armchair critic. It is also used as an armchair traveler. This is used for a person 
who knows about a subject only from what they have read or heard about and not from personal experience. It also refers to one who speaks critically on topics one actually knows little to nothing about. Let's look at our example sentences. Having never left his hometown, he is what one might call an armchair traveler. Or, I do know how to repair the television, so stop being an armchair critic. Have a look at another one. The last thing we need are words of wisdom from an armchair critic. Our next idiom is armed to the teeth. This means carrying a lot of things or weapons that may be needed for a particular purpose. And a look at our example sentences will clarify. The tourists were armed to the teeth with guidebooks and cameras. And the terrorists were armed to the teeth with deadly weapons and bombs. In both cases, it means fully equipped. Next, we have up in arms. This means to be very angry and protesting very strongly about something. Example, the residents of a residential society are up in arms over the delay in conducting elections to the association. And local residents are up in arms over plans to build a new motorway through their farmlands. Then we come to have it on good authority. This means to be able to believe something because you trust the person who gave you the information. For example, I have it on good authority that the chairman is going to resign. Another one, I have it on good authority that there is an arrest warrant for him. Our 15th idiom is have an X to grind. Usually used in negative sentences, it means that someone has private, often selfish reasons for being involved in something. For example, having no particular political axe to grind, he stood for election as an independent candidate. And you can't expect justice from the present committee. They have too many axes to grind. That means they have too many issues, personal issues that they want to settle rather than do good for others. We now have a babe in arms. This means a helpless, inexperienced or innocent person. And a look at our example sentences. No wonder he lost money in the stock market. He's a babe in arms in financial matters. Another one, he is a babe in arms in politics. He can never win an election. Now, similar to this is the next idiom, a babe in the woods. This is used to refer to somebody who lacks experience of life or knowledge and who is too willing to trust other people. For example, we are still babes in the woods when it comes to using computer technology. Another one, as a painter, Ruby is fine, but she is a babe in the woods as a musician. That means she may be a good artist, but a very poor musician. We now have the idiom, a backhanded compliment. This refers to a remark that seems to express admiration 
but could also be understood as an insult. We can say that it refers to an insulting or negative comment disguised as praise, a remark which seems to be praising someone or something, but which could also be understood as criticism. Let's have a look at our example sentences. She told me that my essay was surprisingly good, which I thought was a backhanded compliment. And why did I think it is a backhanded compliment? Because if this is surprisingly good, she had no high hopes of my writing anything worthwhile. Another one would be, she said that when I wear trousers, they really make my look, legs look much slimmer. Now, what a backhanded compliment. Next, let's have a look at the idiom, the backroom boys. This is used to refer to people like scientists, researchers and others who are vital to the success of the event or mission, but who are seldom seen or recognized as they do not have direct contact with the public. And a look at our example sentences. It's thanks to the backroom boys more than to the salespeople that the new product was such a success. Another one would be, although he is a skilled political strategist, he lacks charm and charisma and is likely to stay a backroom boy for the rest of his career. Our 20th idiom is a backseat driver. This is a disapproving phrase used for someone who want to be in control of something that is not really their responsibility. We may say that such a person is someone who tries to establish and maintain control over every situation, who interferes in affairs without having knowledge, responsibility or authority for doing so. And now I look at our example sentences. Though I am in charge of this project, there are too many backseat drivers trying to influence the outcome. Or maybe you feel like saying, stop guiding me. I know my job and don't need backseat drivers to shower unwanted advice on me all the time. We now have the idiom to bend over backwards. No, this does not refer to gymnastics, but to try very hard to help or please somebody, to exert a lot of effort towards some end. This phrase is often used to express frustration when one's efforts go unrecognized. A look at our example sentences. He bent over backwards to please his boss, but still was not considered for promotion. Quite frustrating, isn't it? Another sentence for you. We bent over backwards to help the team improve, but their consistent poor play let us down badly. We now have the idiom, take the bad with the good. This means to accept the bad aspects of something or some situation along with the good ones. This is typically used in acknowledgement that nothing is perfect. Example sentences for you. Nothing in life will be as good as you think. You must learn to take the good with the bad. And when it comes to this job, you have to take the bad with the good. It's hard, but it's worth it. Our 23rd idiom is when the balloon goes up. This means when the situation becomes serious 
critical, chaotic, or troublesome. As for usage, we have my parents' relationship has been on the rocks for years. I just hope I'm out of the house when the balloon goes up. That is, when they finally separate. Another one, I don't want to be there when the balloon goes up. Then we have a ballpark figure. This means a number which is approximately correct, an estimate, an approximate figure or quantity. A ballpark is a park or stadium where baseball is played. For example, do you have a ballpark figure for the cost of renovations? That means, do you have an approximate idea how much it will cost to renovate? And that's just a ballpark figure. They don't know exactly how many people will be attending the event. Another would be, I know we haven't really discussed costs yet, but can you give me a ballpark figure? Can you give me an approximate figure? Can you give me an estimate? But yes, when you say a ballpark figure, it sounds much better, doesn't it? Let's have a look at an idiom related to the banana. And this is to go bananas. This means to become angry, crazy or silly or become irrational or crazy. It is also used to express great excitement over something in an exuberant manner. A look at our example sentences. If I am late again, my dad will go bananas with worry. And the clock's going bananas. Clock is not working properly. Another one showing extreme excitement would be the children will go bananas when we tell them of our trip to Europe this year. That means they'll go crazy with happiness. All of us like to follow a successful person and that has led to the idiom jump on the bandwagon. This means to do something that others are already doing because it is successful or fashionable. In the USA, political parades often included a band on a wagon. Political leaders would often join them in the hope of winning popular support. Our example sentences as soon as the policies became popular, all the other parties started to jump on the bandwagon. And there will always be people ready to jump on the bandwagon and start classes in whatever is fashionable with little or no training. Then we come to the idiom, the bane of one's life. This is used to refer to a person or thing that makes somebody's life unpleasant or unhappy. You can also say that it refers to the source or cause of one's misfortune, unhappiness, frustration or anxiety. And now I look at the example sentences. That car is the bane of my life. It is always breaking down. Another one, that project has been going on for months. It is the bane of my life now. Or maybe Rishi is so annoying and irritating. He is the bane of my life now. Next, we have the idiom bang for your buck. 
This means that you get better value for the money you spend or the effort you put into something. A lot of value for the cost. Buck is an informal word for a dollar. Let's use this in a couple of sentences. You will get more bang for your buck if you buy a Maruti car. Or if we choose an affordable resort at Goa, I think we'll get a lot of bang for the buck. We now come to the idiom, go off with a bang. This means that something, some event has been completed very successfully without any problems whatsoever, with an especially exciting, energetic, or flamboyant flourish in a flashy, vigorous, or forceful manner. As for our example sentences, we have last night's party at a place went off with a bang. That means it was very successful. Or let's usher in your 50th birthday with a bang. That means with a grand celebration. Or maybe you would like to say, I'm worried that if the tensions between these two superpowers don't ease up soon, the whole world might end with a bang. That's something terrible. Here in this sentence, it of course has a different meaning. The world may end in an extremely violent, destructive manner if the two superpowers do not settle their differences. Then we come to the idiom, a baptism of fire. This refers to an unpleasant or frightening first experience of something, usually something difficult or unpleasant. As for our example sentences, we have, my first day at the Air Force Academy was a real baptism of fire because we were asked to run for 10 kilometers with a rifle on our shoulders. And believe me, it was a terrible experience. Or one week into his new job at Google, Ravi felt like he was undergoing a baptism of fire when he was suddenly put in charge of the company's largest account. Our next idiom is bar none. This means without exception. You use bar none to emphasize that someone or something is the best of their kind. Let's have a look at our example sentences. The Girardelli chocolates of San Francisco are the best I have ever tasted, bar none. Or maybe the revolving restaurant at Knott Place is the best in town, bar none. We can also say Alistair MacLean's Golden Gate is the best book I have ever read, bar none. Our 32nd idiom is all over bar the shouting. Now this is used to mean that a performance, contest, etc. is finished or decided with only the audience's reaction or the official announcement to follow. That is, the outcome of something is inevitable at this point, almost finished and therefore virtually decided. Let's use it in sentences. The US presidential elections are all over bar the shouting. That is, the result is virtually a certainty pending confirmation from the legislative bodies. 
with that last goal by argentina it's all over by the shouting that is there is nothing the opposite team can do in the time left to defeat the argentinian team our next idiom is the bare bones this refers to the main or basic facts of a matter it means the essential and most elementary parts of something a general outline or summary when referring to an apartment or house it means minimally furnished or adorned let's use this in sentences my publisher was in a hurry so i just managed to give him the bare bones of the story and had to supply the details later please don't go through each line of the document just give me the bare bones or we worked out the bare bones of a deal that means the outline of a deal the covid epidemic has ensured that all countries will have to slash their already bare bones budgets we now move on to the idiom bare your soul this means to tell somebody your deepest feelings to share one's intimate thoughts or feelings with another person tell them all your private thoughts and feelings let's have a look at the example sentences i don't know raju well so i was surprised that he bared his soul to me finally i bared my soul to her saying that i had always loved her another one would be there are very few people i would bear my soul to our 35th idiom is with bated breath this means one is hardly able to breathe as they are very anxious about something it is also used in situations where you do not expect anything to happen let's see some examples we watched with bated breath as the lion moved slowly towards our vehicle or don't wait with bated breath for molly to come for the meeting she never comes for one don't wait with bated breath for petrol prices to come down meaning that the prices will never come down let's have a look at the idiom batten down the hatches this means to prepare yourself for a period of difficulty or trouble to prepare for a challenging situation while this originated as a nautical phrase it is now used for any sort of imminent problem a batten is a long piece of wood which was used to cover a ship's hatches in a storm hatches are the openings in the deck of a boat leading to the lower level let's use it in sentences most companies are battening down the hatches in view of the recession following the covid epidemic we must batten down the hatches to cope with the problems of a worldwide epidemic or you may say tongue in cheek my mother in law is due to visit us i must batten down the hatches must be on my best behavior and clean up the house a 37th idiom is if you can't beat them join them also said as 
If you can't beat him, join him. This means that if you cannot defeat somebody or be as successful as they are, then it is more sensible to join them in what they are doing and perhaps get some advantage for yourself by doing so. Using this in sentences, we have Everybody else is leaving early today, so I think I will too. After all, if you can't beat them, join them. Another one, seeing that no one else was willing to stick with the old software program, Mel learned the new one, noting if you can't beat them, join them. Then we have Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This means that what one person thinks is beautiful may not seem beautiful to somebody else. An approximation of beauty will differ greatly between different people. Let's use it in sentences. You may not like my new dress, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I don't think he's very attractive, but then beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I suppose. Next, we have beginning of the end. This refers to the first sign of something ending, the first in a series of closing events or the start of a decline in health or fortune. Let's look at the example sentences. We both felt that yesterday's quarrel was the beginning of the end of our friendship. Another one, we all rushed to grandpa's bedside after the doctor warned us that it was the beginning of the end. Our 40th idiom is give it your best shot. This means to try as hard as you can to do or achieve something, to put your utmost energy, effort or determination into doing something. Using it in sentences, we have, I probably won't qualify in the civil services, but I will certainly give it my best shot. Another one. Annie gave it her best shot, but the directors still turned down her proposal. Related to this is the idiom, put your best foot forward. This means to work as fast as you can, embark on an undertaking with as much speed, effort and determination as possible. Using it in sentences, we have, if we put our best foot forwards, we should be there by noon. Another one, you really need to put your best foot forward in the interview if you want to get this job. As also, most public companies will try to put their best foot forward when it comes to communicating with their shareholders. Our 42nd idiom is take the bit between your teeth. This means to start doing something in a determined and enthusiastic way, to begin to do something with decisive, stubborn resolve. The bit is a piece of metal which goes in a horse's mouth and is used to control the horse. If the horse learns to hold the bit between its teeth, then it can no longer be controlled by the rider. Using it in sentences, we have, once he gets the bit between his teeth in an argument, no one can stop him. And in spite of the objections by the directors, the CMD took the bit in his teeth and went public with his accusations.
Our next idiom is a bit bitter pill to swallow. This refers to a thing that is very difficult or unpleasant to accept. It generally refers to an unwanted or unpleasant situation that someone is forced to accept. Let's see what our example sentences say. Getting a poor performance review was a bitter pill to swallow, but it made me a better worker. Failing the bar exam was a bitter pill to swallow, but he plans to try again next year. Also, our people have swallowed a bitter pill in accepting this peace agreement. Our 44th idiom is a blind alley. This refers to a course of action which has no useful result in the end, a dead end, without the hope of progress or success. A blind alley is a way of acting or thinking that is not effective and will not achieve progress. As for example sentences, we have our first experiment was a blind alley, but the second one was a success. And that line of questioning led the police up yet another blind alley. Sooner or later, they will have to realize that this is a blind alley and they need to rethink their strategies. Our next idiom is blow hot and cold. This means to keep changing your opinions about somebody or something. In other words, to vacillate between two opposing or starkly different opinions or behaviors. To be indecisive. Let's as usual use it in sentences. Lily keeps blowing hot and cold about her new job. One day saying it's challenging and the next she hates it. The manager has been blowing hot and cold about whether or not we are going through with this project. He keeps blowing hot and cold on the question of moving to the US. Next, we have the idiom blow away the cobwebs. This means to make you feel lively and refreshed, especially after you have been indoors for too long. Using it in sentences, we have after sitting in front of the computer for hours, I went out and had a long walk along the beach to blow the cobwebs away. And when was the last time you left the house? Come on, get out there and blow away the cobwebs. As also, we had a walk after lunch to blow away the cobwebs. Next, we have the idiom a bolt from the blue. This refers to an event or a piece of news which is sudden and unexpected, a complete and sudden surprise. This idiom refers to a bolt of lightning from a clear sky. Using it in sentences, we have her arrest was a bolt from the blue for her family. And the Bangladesh coup was a bolt for the blue for India. Next, we have pull up your socks. This means to make a redoubled effort, to make a sincere attempt to improve. It can be said when you want someone to improve the situation themselves without help from others. Using it in sentences, we have, my boss told me that if I did not pull up my socks, he would give my job to someone else. And after that poor result in the midterm polls, 
the political party will really have to pull up its socks for the general elections. Next, we have a bottomless pit. This refers to a thing or situation which seems to have no limits or never seems to end. Using it in sentences, we have our financial problems seem to come from a bottomless pit. There is just no end to them. Another one, with all the money we have sunk into repairs for the roof, windows and foundation, this house has become a bottomless pit. And finally, the 50th idiom of this video and the 200th of our series of four videos is the idiom, the bottom line. This means the important conclusion, judgment or result, the most important aspect of something. And now for our example sentences, the bottom line of my YouTube channel is to help you succeed in your exams. Or, these large corporations are only driven by the bottom line. They couldn't care less whether their product is durable. And, don't tell me all those figures. Just tell me the bottom line. Well, that's all from me in this video. All in all, learning a new language can be challenging. It's definitely not a piece of cake, especially when there's so many confusing idioms. However, with enough hard work and interest, you will succeed in no time. And hopefully, idioms will be crystal clear to you and not clear as mud. Do look out for my earlier three videos on idioms. Together, these four videos will help you master 200 idioms in an easy to understand language. Do try and remember as many as you can and do start using them in your daily conversations. This video is based on the information freely available on the internet. No originality is claimed for the same. The intention of this video is only to prepare candidates for answering examination questions on the subject and not for any financial gains. Do like and share this video and do subscribe to my channel now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. Till later then, cheerio!